would like to uh, tell you the entire story of the universe in an hour uh, and a bit about how we learned about it and my personal part of this process and, uh, and where we're going from here. And the title slide here says, uh, from the Big Bang and on, etc., to the discovery of alien life. And uh, so we haven't exactly found it yet, but I think it's possible in the next few decades. And so I want to outline at the very end how we are hoping to find out about that. So there are many, many mysteries. Uh, but uh, first I'll start with how did I get into science? And so here is a picture of the place where I, I grew up. Uh, it's an experimental dairy research station in northern New Jersey. And I like to say that's a, a site of early nerds in Sussex County, New Jersey. Of course, nerds have been around here for thousands of years, uh, but we didn't always have that honorary title. So anyway, this is a good place to grow up if you want to see the sky because it's dark at night and clear and, uh, and there's a lot of time to think because if you're not actually doing farming, you have time. So <clears throat> I read a lot of books and my parents took me to the museum in New York City to see the uh, planetarium show and, uh, and the, the fossils and the bones and the exhibits about volcanoes and I was just really, really excited about science. But it was at that time, a long time ago, uh, people hardly knew anything by comparison to what we know now. So I got to get in at the, uh, at the beginning of a tremendous wave of scientific research and it's been exciting ever since. So I want to share some of that excitement with, with you all about what it is people have been up to for the last many decades. <clears throat> so now we have a picture, this is a picture of the entire universe as seen from the inside, uh, made with a recent satellite mission called WMAP. <clears throat> And so we have now a picture which we call an image of the baby universe. And so I will tell you a little bit about what it means as we go along. <coughs> but um, this is what we think of as the beginning. Uh, and so if we understand things right, we should be able to take computers and make calculations and say, well, all these little speckles that you see in here will grow, eventually grow up to be something. And so what we think is that the, these are maps of the dense regions in the early universe and uh, the dense regions are going to grow up to be galaxies. So we have a story which illustrates here in this chart that says uh, tiny things form first, uh, little tiny galaxies. Um, galaxies are hundreds of billions of stars nowadays, but in the beginning maybe there are just a few stars together. So uh, little galaxies form, then they bump into each other, make bigger galaxies, uh, and they bump into each other and make bigger and bigger galaxies pretty much like uh, a small streams flowing down the hillside will merge to form a giant river. So this is our idea about how galaxies like our own Milky Way were formed, <coughs> but it's an idea and we can't exactly prove it just yet. So on the other hand, we can look at uh, collisions happening between galaxies. Here's a, an amazing one. Uh, this galaxy has clearly taken a piece of the other galaxy and they've sort of wrapped it around in curls around this one. So uh, this one, is evidence that galaxies have been colliding. <coughs> and uh, if we really know how this works, we should be able to simulate it in a computer as well. But just for now, um, it's a, one of those mysteries because we don't honestly know how it works. And what you see is not ne necessarily what you get either. There's a lot of stuff that's unseen in a galaxy. So from galaxies, uh, we th think we know how, uh, how they've grown. This is our nearest neighbor galaxy. It's called the Andromeda Nebula because it's in the constellation of Andromeda. <clears throat> and it has two little miniature galaxies uh, orbiting around it and they're falling in and they're going to be swallowed up in this kind of collision process. So we think our own galaxy was made in a way similar. Uh, we even have two miniature galaxies orbiting around our own galaxy, uh, the Milky Way, and they're also falling in over the next few billion years. <clears throat> so uh, we think we have a general idea of how this happened from the earliest materials. Then uh, we'd like to know how stars are born uh, inside the galaxies and uh, we think that they're still happening. We know that they're still exploding. So here's a star that recently exploded. Uh, it's cast uh, its light out into the universe and some of it's actually bouncing off of uh, dust clouds that are nearby. So this is uh, a remarkable event that was captured in the picture. So we know stars are born and stars explode. <clears throat> and we think that the sun and our solar system were made out of recycled material from this, these kinds of explosions so that we have a story now about how beautiful planets like Saturn could form uh, from that initial material. Then uh, astronomers are still busy in, uh, trying to figure out how it could be that a planet could support life. So how come are we here? Well, here's this amazing little tiny creature that lives here with us on the Earth. Uh, well, when biologists figure out how that could happen, maybe they'll also understand how we could happen. 
Uh, but there's a tremendous mystery that is still open after astronomers finish their work of saying, how come is the Earth wet uh, and at the right temperature? So um, that's the, the part of the great mystery of life. How is, we, how is it that we're here? Now, uh, jumping forward uh, many billions of years, um, see the, er, the universe is about 13.7 billion years old. Uh, the Earth and the Sun are about 4.5 billion, which is about one-third of the total. Uh, creatures like this are pretty recent. Uh, maybe the last half billion years there have been creatures like this. And people like us, uh, able to look out and, and uh, consider all of this, are quite recent. So here's Galileo uh, 401 years ago now, in uh, 1609. Uh, he pointed his little telescope at the sky and said, uh, guess what, it's not what you all said it was. Um, there are little things orbiting around Jupiter, and he could see the little satellites go. There are four of them. You can see them with binoculars yourself. Uh, he saw little ears on the side of Saturn, and, and he didn't know that there were, there were those magnificent rings, but he saw something was up. Um, and uh, he got kind of wound up in politics of the day and ended up under house arrest. Uh, but um, he was still a person of great honor in his time, and uh, people may not realize that, but in, in his time he was also a great hero. And so he's buried in the beautiful church in, in Florence, uh, right across the hall from Michelangelo, and they have equally beautiful tombs. So anyway, he started off modern astronomy. Uh, we will celebrate the International Year of Astronomy in 2009 in honor of that particular event uh, of his telescope. He also even discovered sunspots uh, and mountains on the moon. So a uh, tremendous revolution started for astronomy. Uh, and. Um, Incidentally, uh, there was a tremendous military effect of having a telescope as well. So, um, the, uh, in fact, that was the reason why the real inventor of the telescope didn't get a patent. People recognized immediately that it was militarily important and uh, they didn't want the secret to get out. But of course it did. Now, uh, jumping ahead another 350 years, to 1958, uh, the United States uh, began the space age, uh, uh, and f for itself anyway, in 1958 with uh, formation of NASA. We've had some uh, miraculously uh, wonderful things happen since. This is just an illustration of one of them. Uh, but uh, again, uh, NASA was founded in the height of the Cold War against the Soviet Union. So uh, now I want to surprise you uh, with some stories uh, and go into a little, the, little more detail about the, how we got here. So uh, when you look in the mirror in the morning, you are looking at the inside of stars. If you, uh, you shave or you comb your hair or you just put on your makeup or whatever, you're dealing with the atoms that were actually created inside uh, stars that have then exploded. In the, big, in the Big Bang, according to our story, there was hydrogen and helium left after the, the great explosion and nothing else to speak of. So when you look at carbon, oxygen, nitrogen, sulfur, iron, everything that we're made of, um, it wasn't there then. It was made inside nuclear reactions inside stars, which then blew up just like I showed you in that picture. So uh, I, don't, I don't know if, if you look in the mirror in the morning and you see your whiskers, you don't say to yourself, exploded stars, but I do sometimes. And, and you know, it's still a mystery. Uh, and it doesn't feel like it. It feels like, oh, I've just got to get to work today. But you know, there you are looking at the inside of an exploded star. So uh, how did that all happen and how did we know that? Well, I want to now tell you some of the story of astronomy, how we learned all these things. So uh, the first thing, I have some drawings for you to sort of summarize how we found out. Uh, first thing astronomers do is they want to look back in time to see how things used to be. So uh, we use light. Uh, light travels very fast, but not so fast that it doesn't matter. So it travels one foot in a billionth of a second. It travels uh, six trillion year, miles in a year, uh, and it's a nice round number. So uh, if you look at things that are far away, you see them as they were when they sent light to us. And so if you look things far enough away, you see them as they were a very long time ago. Um, the nearest star, you see it as it was about four years before. Uh, the the uh, middle of our galaxy, about 25,000 years uh, ago. If you look at the very farthest away things you could possibly see, it's almost 15 billion uh, years back in time. The modern number is 13.7 billion, because so, this is an old drawing. So uh, now I want to tell you how did we find out how big stuff is. So we do it the same way the Egyptians and the Greeks learned how to do, uh, with surveying. That's the first method. If we uh, can draw a triangle between uh, two places that we're looking from, say here and here, and we know the distance from there to there, uh, and we can